Okay, guys, uh, welcome back. Here we are in Adamsville, Tennessee. Back to do the Buford Pusser tour again. Uh, the last time we did it, you'll see our other video, uh, the museum was closed. Today we were fortunate enough to get there on the days when it was open. Uh, this is uh, the inside of the museum, which was actually his home. You'll see it's from the, uh, basically the late 60s or early 70s. Uh, picture here, it's Sheriff Clark and his daughter, Duana. The kitchen. Nothing brings you back to the 70s till you see the, the decor. Uh, he's a, quite a famous sheriff. I mean, obviously, they made movies about him. And you'll see some uh, pictures coming up. I think there's a few stars. Uh, these are uh, a lot of mementos and family photos. Uh, he used to be a wrestler. Here we got uh, Ronald Reagan. A lot of newspaper articles hanging around in the house. Uh, these are uh, some of the incidents that he was involved in. Uh, you see there he was stabbed several times. Uh, if you need to uh, pause this, you can read these at your leisure. I didn't take video because they instructed us no video. Uh, just no flash, but you could take photos. And they asked not to take photos of everything so people would uh, come back and visit. This here's uh, one of the bedrooms. I believe this, yeah, this was his daughter's bedroom. And this was uh, stepson Mike's, I believe. This is uh, was Buford's room. This was sealed off, you couldn't go in it as the other bedrooms you could. Let's see some good old 8-track tapes. Shotgun shells, some ammo there. Looks like some IDs. A little note from uh, his daughter. Uh, this would be Buford's bathroom. It's like a deep tub, almost a jacuzzi tub there. This was like in a kind of like an office room here. Uh, this is a commemorative gun. It wasn't his actual gun. This is on uh, on loan from uh, this gentleman here. Pretty interesting place, especially if you're uh, you know a follower of the story or interested or seen any of the movies. I personally like the uh, the older movie, the first one with uh, Joe Don Baker as. Uh, as a uh, Buford Puzzler. A lot of uh, police patches from uh, across the nation on here. All over the place. Even uh, my home state of New Jersey. Afterwards, we uh, picked up a couple of t-shirts Grab the shot glass. They have a you know a gift shop downstairs. Uh, this is the Corvette that I'm not sure either uh, the movie set bought it or uh, one of the dealerships gave it to him kind of like uh, as a gift. I've seen pictures where the dealer is handing them the keys, and then this is unfortunately the accident that uh, took his life. Car uh, was pretty much burned up. He, I believe he was ejected from the car and killed. If you look at the story, it's some people think the car was booby trapped or uh, something was wrong with it, uh, nefariously done. Others say it was just uh, an accident. There was a slight, there's a curve in the road there. Uh, they never found out which. There's no evidence to show that it was any wrongdoing. But with his story, it was uh, quite understandable that people might think foul play was uh, amiss. There's me in the corner. My wife's taking these pictures. I believe this is a 74 Corvette. 
And it's obviously a big block. I can tell by the valve covers. Probably 454 back in those days. No carburetor there. That's what a Corvette looks like under the skin. The car in the background is a big Lincoln. Looks like it barely fits in the garage. Here we are traveling to the uh, the first ambush site. You'll notice on my Garmin, I used the dash cam. The GPS numbers there will take you right to these signs. Uh, the green sign basically says this is the first ambush site. It gives you the date, tells a little bit about the story. This is where uh, his wife is actually struck. Uh, she's actually shot and, and she's killed here. Uh, Buford takes off from this location. I, I don't remember if he was wounded or not, but he, he continues on. He, somehow he, he loses his assailants for a little bit, pulls over. And uh, as the story goes, you know, tries to tend to his wife and uh, uh, see how she is, but she's... Uh, passed away and this is here is the site where he was pulled over trying to tend to her and this is the second ambush site when uh, the assailant struck again and this is when they uh, shot Buford all up and uh, pretty much destroyed his jaw he had many surgeries to put it back this sign here I'm sorry for the I don't have a close-up of it it's basically the same thing as the other one it just tells you the date and, and what happened and that this is the second site And again, the GPS uh, numbers are on the bottom. Put you right at this sign. So now we're at the uh, Tennessee Mississippi State Line. This is where the Shamrock Motel. This building right there was the, I believe, was the White Iris. That was uh, for, owned by that guy, uh, Towhead White. This bar was a different name then. I'm pretty sure this was involved too, but it's a totally different name, different owners. After that, we swung by uh, the sheriff's department, and we met two great sheriff's officers, uh, Wes and John. We had a, quite a chat with them, and they filled us in on a lot of stuff that we didn't know, had some answers here and there. This here is in the uh, sheriff's office. This is a memento that he keeps. The bullet in the frame there is actually fired from Buford's own gun that his daughter owned and uh, gave it to the sheriff. Nice uh, plaque there. And uh, the sheriffs were great. They told us where to places to eat, places to stay. Uh, it was a great visit overall. And then uh, we moved on to our next destination. I hope you enjoyed the video. So, or, you know, sorry I had to put stills and make it a video, but they, did, they didn't want any videoing in the uh, museum. So, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.